The process of looking for a new home can be exciting, browsing through different properties and beautiful pictures, but finding the right one for you can be a bit more tricky. But once you have it, it is time to make the offer to purchase. But what does that process really look like? Here to guide us through this is private property CEO Simon Bray. Good morning, Simon. Morning. How Let's doing, say I have found the perfect property. I am now ready to make that commitment. What are some of the things that I need to ask before I make that commitment? Well, I mean, that's the stage that everyone wants to get to, right? You know, you're looking for the property, you spend hours on our website, perhaps looking through uh, tens of different properties, and you finally find the one that you really like. Uh, at that stage, you're going to make an offer to purchase, which is really a binding contract between you and the seller, provided the seller accepts it. So it can be a, a particularly um, difficult process if you haven't done it before to understand exactly what needs to go into that contract. But really, you have to know that you want the house. So is it in the location that you uh, are happy with, you know, close to schools, the neighborhood and the community that you enjoy? Sometimes it's worth having rented in that neighborhood before so you know exactly what you're getting into. Uh, is the house the type of house you want, uh, you know, the space and all of that? And, and I think most importantly, can you afford it? Uh, because as soon as you sign that offer to purchase, it starts a whole process in motion. And if you can't afford it, well, you've wasted your own time and that of the seller. Okay. Now, let's say I've cleared my mind of any doubt. I'm 100% sure this is the property I want to purchase. What do I do? So the best thing to do at that point is to engage with a professional, so an estate agent or an attorney, to draw up a, a contract for you, which is called an offer to purchase. Basically, it records your offer the price you're going to pay and the, and the terms and conditions that you're happy to uh, accept in a sale uh, and then that'll get submitted to the seller and if the seller likes what he sees then he's going to sign it and you're going to have a binding sale agreement. So it really is just a contracting phase between two parties and it's important to understand what goes into that contract. You know, what are the various clauses that you need to look out for uh, and, and that's where an estate agent or an attorney can really add value. And is there anything specific a buyer should be aware of or at least look out for before making that offer to purchase? Absolutely. I mean, there are a couple of really important things around the sale agreement outside of what price you're going to pay for the property. Um, a suspensive condition is basically if, it's, if this condition isn't met, well, then the sale doesn't go through. Okay. Uh, so there are usually a number of suspensive conditions inside of sale agreements or offer to purchase, uh, and they're things like uh, you have to get a bond within 30 days uh, or perhaps I've got to sell my house before I can buy this house. So those would be suspensive conditions and it's good to look out for those. Okay. Another one people often miss is this concept of the footstoots clause. Uh, there's this uh, misunderstanding in the market that because of the Consumer Protection Act uh, there's no such thing as the footstoots clause. But in an individual property transaction, say you're selling a house to me, that clause absolutely can go into a sale agreement, which means uh, you're selling the house to me as it stands. So I need to be aware of any defects and be happy to uh, sort them out if they do present themselves down the line. So that's a good one to look at. So that is what the footstoots clause is. Yeah. It, it, you, I'm selling it to you as is. Yeah, exactly. Provided you don't know about any major problem that you haven't told me about, because that would be fraudulent, right? But if you don't know that the geezer's about to burst and the geezer bursts, well, then it's the new uh, purchases problem and that's kind of the definition of that footstoots clause. And Simon, what happens in the event that you've bought the house but people are still occupying it? <laughs> yeah, I mean the transfer process usually takes uh, about 12 weeks in this country. So specifying exactly when you're going to move in has to be in that offer to purchase. So it usually records a date of occupation and if, as you say, the person continues to live in the place after that date of occupation, then you'd also specify occupational rent. Uh, so that's how much rent they would effectively pay you to live in that place. And it's usually quite high. It usually has to cover all the costs of ownership for the property. So you do need to look out for those ownership uh, clauses like the occupational rent clause. So you, they basically want to get you out on the day you said specifically. Exactly. Yeah. And what are some of the things you should not do after you've done your OTP? Well, one thing that's really interesting is people will sign multiple offers to purchase. So uh, you've seen two or three houses, you put in two or three different offers and then you look to get the cheapest one. But the problem is if all of those sellers sign those offers, you've actually just bought three properties. So you don't want to do that. 
Uh, you don't want to sign an offer that you can't get finance for, so you need to know what your affordability level is. Uh, and you can't just rely on what people call the cooling off period. There's a little clause that goes in the contract that says, you know, if I change my mind in the next five days, then I'm allowed to. That cooling off clause actually really only applies to property below a certain value, usually really low, like 250,000 Rand, okay. and those directly marketed. So you don't really want to rely on that clause. Well, thank you, Simon, for showing us all those small details when you have to make these big decisions. Now, if you want more information, visit privateproperty.co.za and have a look at the property advice section where you can find some valuable information about when it comes to buying property.